So this is experiment two. So I have decided to use a temperature of 36 degrees from the results of experiment one. I want to find out if yeast needs food in order to produce CO2. So in Chronicle Flask A, I have added glucose, sugar. And in Chronicle Flask B, I've added just water. Now the water inside each of these Chronicle Flasks is 36 degrees, and I'm checking that on the thermometer. And I've surrounded it with water, which is 36 degrees as well, so that um, I can sustain that temperature. And what I'm doing is I am timing and observing what is happening. So we can already see from this experiment that A is already activating and that balloon is blowing up. So I'll stop the clock now, it's five minutes, and you can see that A has done really well. And for my observations, which I'm going to make notes on, um, B is starting to foam, so I think it will produce a gas eventually. So I'm just going to take the measurement of A. I'm going to be very delicate because I don't want to um, disturb the balloon at all. That's quite tricky. <laughs> So I'm going to measure this on my tape measure now. So for A, the diameter of the balloon is 19.5. So after five minutes, A is 19.5 centimetres and... I'm not going to measure B because I don't think it's um, got any gas in it yet, but we'll see on the next one. Okay, start the clock again for 10 minutes. Okay, we're now at 10 minutes, so we're going to go ahead and measure the... Alexa, stop. Yeah, I've got two timers on the go here. Um... So at 10 minutes, so from the observations, you can actually see that the that B, um, the chronicle flask that doesn't have any sugar in, is still, uh, you know, respiring. You can see the froth that's been built up here and the balloon is starting to fill. There is definitely gas in that balloon. Um, so we're going to, first of all, measure A. It's doing really well and I can see the activity in the conical flask as well. Okay, so I'm going to get my string. I'm going to measure it with my soft tape measure. Wowee. So that's increased to 22.5 centimetres. Um, and although, um, I don't know if I, um, I'm not going to measure this one yet because it's still, our class has no recording. So I'm going to time another five minutes and see what happens. So here the balloon's at 15 minutes. So I'm going to go measure them now and then set another five minutes on the clock. You can see that um, Chronicle Flask B um, is still not inflated, but it's getting there slowly. And the froth is already up to the neck of the Chronicle Flask. So it is still respiring, just not at the same rate as the one with sugar. So we're at 20 minutes and you can see that um, test B is started to inflate. Um, a slow starter, but it's there now. Um, so we're going to measure both of the balloons this time uh, to get our reading and then start the clock again. So on the 20 minute reading, um, 
Test A was had a 30 centimetre diameter and test B had a 12 centimetre di uh, diameter. And we are just going to check the water temperature and it is still at 36 degrees. So this is a fair test. So this has now been going for an hour and you can see that the balloon has inflated again. So we're going to take one more measurement uh, to see the diameter of these balloons. I can still see that there is some activity in these flasks. And we also need to check the temperature of the water it's at in. Well, we, this is going up by a, a very steady, um, almost at two centimetres on each measurement. So it has slowed, because it has been half an hour since we left it. And this one. Oh. <laughs> okay, so this one is... so. A is 35 and B is 16. Oh my gosh. With um, B, it's actually going up by one centimetre on every measurement. But we left that last one to half an hour. So it has slowed down.